tastes just right. I've got a ladle and a spoon and I'm gonna use both. Take a big serving, it'll spur your growth. Hey Liz, what's the soup du jour? It's split pea floaty. Oh, that's for sure. We're gonna split those peas and split them real nice. And then what comes next? Pour it over some rice. Now what's a good dish for the side? What's a what's a good dish for your eyes? What's a what's a dish that's nutritious and healthy but also insanely delicious? It's carrots. It's carrots. It's you could I mean you could you could eat some carrots.
kidding. I really wanted tomato soup. All right, everybody. Trying to get, I have multiple devices going on right now. So hopefully, oh, good. I can see myself on my computer screen. So welcome. Um, I am Karen. I am your facilitator for the day. I've been with Silicon Saunders since April. I've been a user since February before the pandemic started. So gosh, time goes crazy. So I have no idea how long that actually has been almost two years, almost two years, I guess. This month, I guess is two years. Wow. Um, I found Silicon Saunders from a friend. Actually, I was really struggling with finding time for self-care, which I think all of us can relate to even before the pandemic, because that was me. Um, and I fell in love with it and it literally has changed my life. It's changed my hobbies. It's changed my profession. Um, so I'm just thrilled to be here with you guys. I'm located right outside San Francisco. Um, that's actually Silicon Saunders headquarters is in San Francisco. And we're going to go ahead and get started for today. Maya is going to be jumping on camera in a minute as well. Um, make sure that your chat is set to everyone just so that we can see everything in the chat. You can have your cameras on. You can have your cameras off. There is no judgment if you're in pajamas. I picked the thing that was closest to pajamas for myself today as well. And if you have dirty dishes in your sink, there's no judgment on that either. Um, I'm lucky that... Um, I had um, a housekeeper come yesterday, so my kitchen looks relatively neat. So um, just so that you know, we just by being here, you already are enrolled for your self-care raffles. So that's awesome. And um, one other little housekeeping that I will say is that I am in my home. This is my kitchen. I am not a professional chef by any means. I'm a home cook just like you. It has been a, hab um, a hobby of mine for years. And so I apologize if you hear little footsteps. And I guarantee you when I start chopping up the bok choy that my um, Snickers and Petey will come running. Um, hopefully Snickers will behave himself and be quiet, but I do not guarantee anything. Normally I'm in my office, my husband's office, and it has muting, but I actually have my phone on a cell um, on a stand and my computer here. So there's no like filtering of noises. So I apologize. Anyway, and Lee, I bet you're not cooking today. You're here for moral sport like Amber. If so, welcome. You know, you can cook along with us. You can watch and hang out. We, uh, this is very, very, very casual. And we're just thrilled that you guys are all here today. How, oh, we got 48 with us today. Yeah, you know, Lee's gonna color and that's awesome too. So without further ado, go ahead and make sure you do have your journal on page 20. And um, we're going to go ahead and start prepping our ingredients. Um, Amber's talking about having a house housekeeper, debating trying one out because back pain is hard. I'm going to say that um, it definitely saved my marriage. My husband is very much type A and I am very much a free spirit. And when we first got married, um, it was a bit of a battle. And so having someone come every other week is definitely very good for my mental health as well as his. So I am going to deviate from the recipe a little bit. I was inspired by some of the posts in Saunders Club that a lot of people were actually adding protein. I don't eat a lot of meat. I'm by means, no, I'm not a vegetarian. I ate Chick-fil-A earlier this week. Um, and I'm sure not vegan, but I do really like to eat plant-based. I guess I'm a flexitarian. And so I'm going to share with you guys how I'm going to get my tofu um, prepped because I have a feeling some of you probably don't have experience with tofu. So I thought it might be interesting to be able to give you a little insight with that. So before I start chopping my shallots, I'm going to take my tofu and I'm going to drain it. and I really love this brand of tofu. It's Hodu. I subscribe to Purple Carrot, which is kind of like Blue Apron for vegans. And that's how I got turned on to this brand. And another thing to know about it is that um, you want firm tofu. You're going to see something called silky tofu in the stores. That's usually what you have like in miso soup. I'm going to be air frying this in my oven. So I want that extra firm texture. So I'm going to grab my knife and I'm going to open up the package. Um, 
Amanda, you're putting tofu in your soup too? That's awesome. So I'm just gonna open it up and I have a tofu press here. And if you are using a protein, I saw a lot of people use chicken, um, which is awesome. Chicken would be delicious in this. And I was thinking if you're someone who needs to uh, uh, save time for a weekday meal that a rotisserie chicken would probably be very easy to throw in there um, without having to do any extra work. Also, some people were using shrimp. I grew up on the Gulf Coast in Texas, and so I don't really enjoy shrimp that's not from the Gulf Coast. I'm the same way with oysters. I guess it's just, you know, what you grew up with is what you end up loving. Um, Sue, so, you know, I've not used any low carb noodle, but I am a Trader Joe's fiend. And they have a hearts of palm pasta that people who are keto really seem to enjoy. Oh, Amber, you're saying you can't eat crab from anywhere else. Well, I'll say it's the same about, um, for me, it's the same with oysters. I only like Gulf Coast oysters. There's some that are okay that I do like from the East Coast, but I'm not a fan of West Coast um, very much. Oh, it's, um, Maya's saying that shiitake noodles would be good too. Um, I definitely could see that. I've used kelp noodles in the past as well. I have to order those off Amazon, but when I was trying to do vegan keto for a month, I did use those and they were, you know, pretty tasty. So I got my tofu thrust here and I'm just letting the water drain out because it cooks up crispier that way. If you ever want to use it and you do not have a tofu press and you want to experiment with tofu, one way you can do that is just put coat it in paper towels and weight it down with your cast iron pan or something, something heavy. I have not tried Miracle Noodles at Sprouts, but I have a Sprouts right near my neighborhood. I should try those out. I absolutely love it. All right. Again, so, I, yeah. Again, I was just going to check really quick. Do you want me to stop the um, slideshow so folks can see you a little bit better? Are you good with that? Yeah, that would be awesome. And cool. um, come in on camera. I'm going to make myself bigger on my computer screen. I'm going to start going with those shallots too. That way I can see what view you guys are seeing as well. And I apologize for the sun. I'm trying to angle everything so it's not as bad. So I'm going to start chopping my shallots. Um, who's cooking with me today? Anybody? Is everybody just chilling, watching? There's nothing wrong with that. So I love shallots because they are, um, you know, a blend of onion and garlic. So I really do enjoy the flavor of them. I, however, really despise picking off the paper of these guys. Ooh, Whitney's already started cooking, nice. All right, good, okay. So everybody's kind of cooking along. I'm gonna be a slow poke, um, throwing my stuff in my compost bin. I'm very lucky in California that I actually have a whole garbage can for compost, so I don't actually have to do it in my backyard. Does anybody have any idea, and I don't know, why shallots get moldy so fast? That's like my biggest thing with that, don't know. Oh, Whitney, your husband's joining too. That's awesome. You may see my husband walk through at some point. So starting out with that first shallot, got all my paper skins off. And then I like with my knife, I'm gonna see if I can angle this a little more for you guys so you can see my cutting board. Um, I do like slicing at that diagonal, cutting in and then going along the edges so that when I cut, it's a little um, already kind of chopped up for me. All right, here we go. So you can see when I'm cutting, since I made those little slots that it's coming out already chopped, most of you here probably already know how to do that. Um, but those of you who might be in is a new technique, so I know that Maya went to Disney World or Disneyland this last week. Yep, we were in Disneyland last weekend. So this time last weekend, we were in Disneyland enjoying the um, all the Lunar New Year food because they always have a really amazing Lunar New, New Year food stands and everything. So that was super fun. What was the best food that you tried? 
Uh, we had some really good garlic noodles. There was a lot of stuff that was really spicy and it was like super spicy this year. Maybe it was me. I don't know. There was a, they had a really spicy, it was like some sort of a dragon something drink and they had some really good, they have a, they have a lot of the impossible meats now. So they have like impossible meatballs and they had those, um, with like a spicy Szechuan sauce and, um, very, very good. Over regular meat? Um, well, I didn't necessarily, it was, that was one of the things that they had. So I'm good with, I'll try the vegetarian stuff and I'll try the regular meat and that kind of thing. So they did have some meat products and then they had the alternative as well. I don't mind the Beyond. I like the Beyond better than Impossible. This shallot is getting to me if you're wondering why I'm crying. Oh my gosh. And unfortunately, I just put my lashes on and the don't, <laughs> don't touch the your eyes hasn't set yet. So it's trying to like squeeze my eyes together. Oh my gosh. How funny. That's what I get for being vain, right? Being on camera. I, <laughs> want to I would love to go to Disneyland or Disney World for some of the holiday celebrations because I'd want to do the food. I'd love to try the, the food and wine one. Yeah, I was going to say, so World does, um, they have a food and wine one usually in September and actually Disneyland is starting theirs. I can't remember when they're, because they do kind of a food and wine one as well. It's in, it's in the California Adventure Park. So I think that actually starts maybe in March at some point. So they have all these different foods. So it's really, they have a lot of the local folks from places in California that come and do the, um, that do the booths and everything so have you been yes uh, it was a long time ago when we went to that one so I keep trying to talk my husband into doing it again this year he's like I don't know <laughs> was it really crowded that's my concern yeah it was it was it was crowded the lines weren't actually too bad but there were there were a lot of people um there's a lot of people I think that we're missing Disneyland and so it's kind of one of those things where because we have annual passes and we pretty much always have annual passes and um so some people are like oh it's usually not that busy this time of year and I'm like yeah but you know what they were closed for almost two years with COVID so um they uh <laughs> I think a lot of people are making up for lost time so it's you just kind of we were always there at the beginning in the morning and then it's usually not too bad, at least for the first three or four hours. And then every, then it starts to get kind of busy. So before COVID and I'm so crying, sorry about that. Oh, the shallot. Um, we did go to, um, universal in Florida and it was so crowded that literally I was having to hold his hand not to get lost when we were in the Harry Potter sections. <laughs> was like oh this is crazy but I I was fine with it then I don't know how I would feel about it during you know until this pandemic is completely and totally wrapped up yeah we we went back when was the first time we went back we were back in August I think so and it wasn't quite as busy then but I want to go and I just like, I want to go at Halloween and have all the food at Halloween. And like, yep. I think I would not plan it on rides. I would plan it on all the food things that I wanted to do when we were, um, before I got married and this has been like almost 20 years ago at this point. Um, but we did, he's from Florida. He's, um, a gator. So we did do Epcot and we did drink around the world. And that was really fun. Cause you know, we were like 22. I think at this point that would not go as well for me. I was going to say, I might be like drink a, a quarter of the way around the world. <laughs> I don't think I could go to everyone. I don't so, think and, we ended up going to all of them, but we did have the passport and did visit some. And I remember that was my first time having an apple liqueur. And I think it was in the German section. And I was like, oh, this is fancy. Cause I didn't know my parents didn't ever drink alcohol except for like very occasionally they <laughs> There's two very distinct bottles I remember from my childhood when they would, which was very rare. They had, it's a terracotta colored bottle and it's called Lancers. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? No, it doesn't it's, a, sound it's like almost sweet and slightly effervescent. And it was the God awful and had like a, a pool, like, you know, one that's like the ring you stick your hand oh, in. Oh yeah. Out. And then they always had that black bottle for like when we were really fancy was um, 
it was kava, which is the um, sparkling drink of Spain. And it's in that black bottle. And those are the only two I ever, only two alcohol I ever saw. And like, sometimes they sat around for years. So, you know, <laughs> apple liqueur, oh my goodness. This is like very gourmet stuff. Melissa says her parents drink that. <laughs> I think it may be like one of those things is kind of like fondue during that time period. Like yep, if it's you like, were my generation, that yep, maybe there's you're... like a, a fashionable thing that everybody does or has. Right. Because remember, rose was definitely like looked down upon until recently. Right. So, you know, things things come in and out of fashion. It's kind of like um, in the 90s, everyone drank Chardonnay. And they wanted those big oaky Chardonnays. I mean, what was, isn't that what Sideways was about? Yes. <laughs> this is I a mean, lot of shallots, guys. This is. And I was going to say, how many shallots is there supposed to be? Three shallots. Three shallots, but I think mine are bigger than normal shallots. And then I saw. Shallots. I was going to say that one you were cutting looked really big. And then I see Kim is asking, um, "How many is a bunch green onions?" Um. Well. I think the it kind of depends on how much how much you like green onions. So there's Karen's bunch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So like if you're getting out of your garden, this is what they sold at the grocery store. And this is about eight. I think I'm going to forgo the last shot of it because my eyes are watering and y'all are going to think I'm crazy. I'm going to drain the water off of my tofu. Well, because I don't want it sitting in there because then it doesn't really help. So yeah, I guess I'm heading into... The green onions as well. I don't really love the whites. Um, well, actually, I don't really like the greens either raw. So I'm going to saute my whites when we're actually sauteing, but I am going to throw my greens in when I'm putting the mushrooms and such in because I do like the flavor, but I don't like them raw because I get that taste. I'm, I'm weird that way. I used to love having garlic all the time, but not so much anymore. I say, well, don't feel bad because Nora says that um, her eyes are watery from the shallots. <laughs> oh, good. You know, I'm very sensitive to it, but I really don't want my eyes getting glued together because it's um, the lashes that I put on, they're DIY extensions and you put them underneath your lash. Oh. And so that's where the glue is. So if I'm closing my eyes to wipe the tears, my eyes will get stuck together. <laughs> And it's not going to be helpful when you try to cook if your eyes are glued no, together. No, I'd be here doing this. And then I would have all that shallot on my hand. And oh, yeah, no, it's not it. So I no. am going to just chop them all in one bunch. You don't need to cut them one at a time. I did look and kind of, you know, there's like some of that icky peel stuff. So I'm pulling those off. And then I'm just going to chop it. I am going to separate them. And I'm going to separate my bok choy, too, from my whites, from my greens, because experience, if you've not cooked with bok choy, is because that white part is definitely um, takes longer to cook that I like to put it in first. And then I like to just wilt the green part slightly. So that's that's my strategy today. I don't know. It may work. It may not. So. Yeah. And, and you know, I just... Green green onions are definitely one that you find a lot in Asian flavors. Because yeah, and I see a lot, um, see some folks saying like, oh my gosh, that's so many onions. You know, if you if you are not a big onion fan, I think a little a little bit of onions are good for flavor, but you know, do do what tastes good to you. If the that a huge amount of shallots is not your favorite, add a little less. Or if you want to if you prefer to add like a yellow onion or something, if you like the flavor of that better, I think that's fine too. Yeah, this definitely is a recipe that allows a lot of customization. Is anybody adding shrimp or chicken to theirs? Is someone adding different vegetables? I think for mine, I'm going to throw some edamame in for some additional protein. And I just happen to have some shiitake. So I'm going to throw them in when I'm doing the saute because it says saute this. And I've never boiled shiitakes before. If you have, throw it in the comments and then maybe I'll alter my plan. But since it says saute, I think I'm gonna throw these in when I'm sauteing everything. I think this is a really good recipe. Like this is a nice base, but it's also if there's other things like um, 
Kathy is saying adding bean sprouts and cilantro at the end. Mm, um, I, I was thinking like some nice shredded carrots might be good to kind of add a little color and a little, a, a little more texture. But yeah, it's kind of one of those. It, it's a good, um, you know, what's in my refrigerator? Let's see. I've got here's some onions. Here's some carrots. Here's some whatever. Just kind of throwing everything in together. Oh, totally. Because ultimately, as long as you have your soy sauce, ginger, and garlic, you're going to have those Asian flavors anyway. But you know what would also be a nice addition is a little sesame oil to get that that flair to it too. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. Cutting board starting to fill up. If you don't own little prep things, these are so nice to be able to pull things off your cutting board without having to dirty your dishes. Uh, we move so much. We only have like three plates and three bowls. So that's, you know, I use these. And then I'm looking for my pastry scraper, which apparently since I didn't run the dishwasher this morning, oops, um, must be in the dishwasher. So I'm going to use my hands to throw these in. So at least I see that people are going to um, add carrots. Are there any other modifications that we're seeing at this point? I, I saw several people had said they were having a hard time um, finding bok choy sometimes at their grocery stores. So I do think some, depending on where you live and maybe depending, I don't know if there's like a better time or easier time to find it, but um, bok choy is a member of the cabbage family so you could absolutely use you know maybe some other, you could probably just use some cabbage if you couldn't find um, any bok choy or if, or if you're not a bok choy fan I actually love bok choy because it's such a mild flavor I even use it in smoothies so like you know when you're making green smoothies it's important so I'm told that you do a lot of variety. So like sometimes I'll use arugula, sometimes I use bok choy, sometimes I'll use romaine, and sometimes I use spinach. But the bok choy, especially if you have kids that are very picky about what it is that they're eating, is um, very mild. They won't taste it. I don't taste it. So for me, um, I'm a huge Alton Brown fan. And he did an experiment that a lot of people say that you're supposed to use like a mushroom brush and you're not supposed to do water on them. But he actually did an experiment where he weighed it out. And I always clean mine and I don't like dealing with this. So I'm going to pull these out, give them a little wash and then start slicing. Another thing that he did, um, I don't have one because we moved so much, I got rid of it. But um, if you are someone who really loves mushrooms, you can use an egg slicer and you can slice them and then they are sliced perfectly even. And so if you're sauteing them, they saute a little more evenly and it's also just plain easier. So there you go. That's There's a good idea. Alton. That's my Alton tip. I do love Alton. Him and Gordon are my celebrity chefs. And then my girl crush is Rachel Ray. I always love her. She's the one who taught me and anything that I, all the beginning things I learned to cook because my mom did not cook. And I'm using cremini uh, because it's what I had from my imperfect produce delivery. So um, these are baby portabellas. They're not the white ones, but you know, they're great. They're delicious. And I saw Kim is saying she's not using um, the anise, the licorice flavor in there, which some people do not like that. So if you do not like black licorice flavor, you probably do not want to add um, those star anise. Anise, yeah. <laughs> yes. I love it, yes. so. <laughs> I am not a huge fan of it. I'm going to use it for the sake of the fact that I bought it, um, but it is a very dominant flavor in um, Chinese five spice. So if you don't love Chinese five spice, Mm. in your food you're probably not going to like the star anise uh, and it's like one of those things that you don't use that often either in your cooking i think i had some in my pantry but literally it was probably like five years old so i bought <laughs> fresh um what else do we use star anise and i feel like maybe we use it in mulling spices sometimes yeah i, I feel like there's some exciting. There's maybe some cookies or something that maybe use it. 
Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it either. It's like, it's okay. It's not my favorite. And I was just going to say, if you cook a lot and you are messy like me, man, microfiber towels are the best. They're not pretty, but man, are they like great for sopping up water and washing your hands and such. Yeah, All Julia right. says Julia says she puts it in a, um, simmer pots and it looks really pretty because it is a pretty little spice, that little star that kind of floats around and it is, it is looks I'm pretty. So sliced mushrooms and they are going in boiled, right? These are the ones that are being boiled. So I'm going to throw them in their own little separate container. So it's real easy for me to throw it into my pot. This is going to be, um, this is an interesting one. Um, it just makes me laugh that it's like the one we're cooking the day before Super Bowl. Because <laughs> I have a feeling no one would be serving this at Super Bowl. Yeah, this probably isn't your typical Super Bowl fare. Uh. <laughs> I don't think that this is also one that would, would hold well for lunches mm. and such. Yeah. Because that bok choy, if you like that bite of it, would be soggy and your rice noodles when you reheat it are going to be a little overdone. Yeah, I think it's definitely a, like, does, we're going to make this and we're going to eat it right now. Yep, I don't think this is going in my lunchbox for the rest of the week. No, where some of our other recipes have, so. Yeah, and, you know, I, I guess you could, like, saute everything up if you're trying to meal prep for the week and um, just add your broth and fresh vegetables the day of. I don't know how much time it would save you, but some. I was looking to see if anyone had made any comments. Not yet. I wonder where everyone is in the cooking process. Maya, do, do many people have their cameras on? Can you tell? We have a couple people who look like they're cooking. I see Whitney and Angela look like maybe they're doing something in the kitchen. Oh, Angela's holding up. Is that a shallot, Angela? Sorry, click the wrong oh, yeah. button. I'm working on my garlic. Oh, she's working on our garlic. Okay, awesome. Dawn says she's working on her ginger. I just finished I just chopping finished up everything. everything. She just finished, Whitney just finished chopping up everything. Y'all are fast. I know, well, they're not, they're not chatting like we are. <laughs> so how many garlic, four cloves of garlic. Oh, and then Kim. I'm gonna grab my ginger too. And I put in the app, that um, when I just happened when I was a teenager or college student to go to this cooking store and they were doing an Asian cooking demonstration and they taught me something that I use every single time I use ginger. And what it is, is that if you freeze your ginger and microplane it, it's so much easier than having to do a spoon to pull it off. So I'm gonna grab my ginger out of the freezer. Nice. Oh, and I see Kim is holding up a giant head of bok choy. <laughs> that is a lot of bok choy, Kim. Um, let's see, I think, what does it tell us we need? We need, it, it just says one and a half heads of bok choy. So in my mind, it's kind of like, how much do you want in there? I would probably put about half of that because that looks like a pretty big it, it does when you cook it it does tend to shrink down a little bit right but um <laughs> do you get that from instacart kim <laughs> she's <laughs> they, well it's good that they picked a nice big head of bok choy here i'll see if i can um we'll put kim in her big bok choy hold that up again kim so everybody yeah, can let's see, see. <laughs> oh my gosh mine right. are like minor baby yeah see yeah so that's why I'm saying, I'm like, I would maybe use half of that. I don't know. What do you think, Karen? I'd probably use about a third, probably. I mean, depending on how many people are eating. If you have a family of four, oh, one, yeah, I would do about a third. I'd do about a third of that. Um, so my fro I just keep frozen ginger and then I have my microplane and I love it because it looks like snow. And so <laughs> now I also do my garlic because I like to microplane it. So it's nice and even. I don't get those little spicy bites. Oh, Sue is saying the baby bok choy is more tender than the big ones. So sometimes you might want to get the baby bok choy. 
I think that's what it is that I have. It was just the baby bug like, show him. Store. See, look, it's like snow and it will melt down much smaller, but I find this so much easier. But I was going to say, if you want a cheater's way, I didn't know about this, but I told you I'm like a huge Trader Joe fan and their freezer section. And I use this on weeknights. They have ginger and garlic already in cubes and you can just push them out and saute. I'm doing oh my- fresh with, with you guys. And I thought, you know, that would be better, but that's in my awesome. Life, I do use these. Did I you- love Trader Joe's. Um, Kathy is asking if you peeled the ginger first before you were shaving no, that on there. No, I don't because it, um, it separates from the edge as it kind of pulls away. So I don't end up with it in my actual ginger. Oh, so like as you're putting that on there, it actually yeah, you kind, can of see separates it's, it the- kind of separates flares away and then I can just pick from the center and then I don't have an issue. But, you know, someone may, who is more sensitive, like I eat my carrots and potatoes with skin on. So I don't have textural issues with things like that. Some people do. I always find it's a pain to cut the, I try to cut the, the you know, that, that peel off of the ginger, but it's, it's kind of a pain. It is. And I used to have this little dish that was actually made for dealing with ginger. And I ended up, I got it for my wedding from William Sonoma. And I ended up, you can also see, see the brown is kind of ending up on the front part of the mm. microplane. Um, yeah, I find that the microplane works much better than even that little device that was made specifically for ginger. Got it. Oh, and then um, is it Camille is saying that using a regular metal spoon, it scrapes the ginger skin right off. Yeah, I know that that's a tip that a lot of people use, but I'm too lazy to even do that before. <laughs> Karen's like, I don't care. I'm just using my little microplane. And are there any other suggestions for the ginger if someone does not have the microplane? Um, if it is not frozen, I I just chop off the edges and then chop, like I mince it up. There you go. That's what most people do. Most people mince up their ginger. I just... My knife skills are not as good as my husband's. Like we took a knife skills <laughs> class together. I don't know, probably 15 years ago. And it was all about like making ham salad and like, you know, like these things that where it actually looks bad if you don't. And um, his all was perfectly the exact same size and looked amazing. And mine did not. So if I can get around my chopping skills, I will. But these gingers, ultimately, they come from my purple carrot when they give us little pieces. So I never buy ginger. I just take it out, freeze it, and then it's already in a nice size chunk. And then I pull it out when I need it. But like I said, on a weeknight, I ultimately do the, um, the Trader Joe's thing. I'm trying to get where y'all don't have a glare of this. Let's see if I turn it around, if that's better now. All right. Oh, there sounds- you go. Sun's kind of moved. So you can see my ginger's nice little pile here. I'm going to start with my garlic as well. And I'm also just for fun going to add some egg to mine, kind of like in the picture. And I'm going to use my Instapot. So as soon as I get this garlic dealt with, I'm going to get those eggs going in the Instapot. I really hate boiling eggs because a lot of times they'll crack on me. But in general, most of the time in the Instapot, that does not happen to me. Before I had an Instapot, I did Alton's Brown where you bake them in the oven. But the Instapot's so nice and easy. So easy, you throw it in. That, like that's basically what you do. I'll show you in a second as soon as I get done with my, my garlic. Does anybody cook their eggs in their Instapot? I have not made the jump to the Instapot land, but... <laughs> You know, Um, I love it. I love it so much. And it's funny because, because Alton Brown, my husband's like, if we get this, is this a unitasker? And so he actually ended up buying the Instapot because he found this cookbook out of like a New York times article. It was about Indian food. And the fact that because it is in general, so time consuming to make, I should have just smashed this with my knife. What am I thinking? Um, that 
people are losing their heritage when it comes to Indian cooking. And so this woman created an entire cookbook on curries using the Instapot. So he's the one who actually bought the Instapot, not me. Interesting. Yeah, I keep, um, we have so much stuff in our kitchen and it's like, we don't have a lot of counter space. So I'm always kind of like, I don't know where I'm going to put it. But I see a lot of people, a lot of people are saying, um, they love their Instapot. Lee said, I made butter chicken in the Instapot. So I guess I do cook. She said, there you go. Um, yeah, a lot of people are saying eggs in the Instapot, Instapot, um, the steam makes it so easy to peel and they're perfect okay. every time. And you know, it's so easy just to put a half dozen. I have the smaller Instapot to a half dozen in there and then put them in the fridge for the week. And then in my office at work, I um, keep everything but the bagel seasoning and then I'll sprinkle some of that on or if I'm feeling really fancy, a little squirt of mustard, I call it like, you know, cheaters, deviled eggs. <laughs> but it gives it a little bit of a creaminess because sometimes the egg yolk, if it's, you know, it can get a little like caught in your throat. Yeah, it's a little dry sometimes. A little dry. Yeah. You got a big pile of garlic there. <laughs> I don't know if y'all love sparkling water. The Waterloo black cherry is so good. Yep, I've got the uh, watermelon right here. <laughs> oh, there we go. I have not tried the watermelon. It's good. It's good. The um, I get them off of Imperfect, and so when they do the delivery, so I have not seen the watermelon come up. But when I see it in the store, I will grab it. They are really good. Oh, Brenda is saying chicken breast with seasoning and a cup of water on high for 10 minutes and you have chicken for the week. Easy shreds um, or to cut. Love my instant pot. Oh, that's a really good tip. That's that's as easy as getting a rotisserie chicken, right? I did. Um, I don't like I said, I don't cook a lot of meat very often, but I did do one. Um, a couple of weeks ago, it was you put roast in and you put pepperoncinis and pepperoncini juice and then ranch packet and a jus and a little bit of broth and cook it down. And then um, I think they call it a Mississippi roast, something like that. But um, one of my friends posted it from Texas where I'm from, my small town. And one of the guys said that what he does is he shreds it and then he puts it on Hawaiian buns with provolone cheese oh. and I for. And then I had enough left over. And so then um, I just heated it through in the Instapot, cause you know, you can use the saute function. And then I pulled out the meat when it was warm and created a gravy. So I used it that way for a second night. Nice. But man, meat has gotten so expensive. Yeah. It's like a bad cut of roast and it was just for two people. It was $16. Yeah. Obviously I don't buy meat very often. I was all like, wow, that's a lot. It's definitely expensive. We try to do a, a balance so there's sometimes we have kind of a a meatless dinner oh and carolyn says um she'd really recommend a dash of sesame oil in the broth yummy yeah i think i think that would be a good addition as well i definitely do if you are using a microplane the garlic does like to get stuck in here so rinse it as soon as possible otherwise you're gonna have to pick it off later yeah, garlic is very, very sticky. Yeah, I'd like to say some of those remedies actually work of like, you know, rubbing it on stainless steel <laughs> or those kinds of things, but I never find that it makes that big a difference. Okay, so shallots are going in and then the green onions going in and then the white part with the garlic and ginger. So I'm going to throw those in. I don't think I did this right. I put it all in one. You know, I don't think it's going to make that big a difference. Nope. I do know that a lot of times, however, when it says to cook the garlic, especially if it's pieces of garlic versus microplane, because it has a tendency to burn. And so a lot of recipes yep. say to put it in with the onions. And I don't like that because the onions take so much longer to cook. Yeah. Onions definitely take longer. So you do want to be careful putting that garlic in at the same time, because garlic is, especially if you've got it microplane like that, you can it doesn't take long to get it to the flavor to pop out and be done. All right. So I still have some bok choy and such to cut up. 
Um, really important to wash this if you've not worked with it before because it's kind of like celery. I almost pull it apart. I'll take you with me. Don't laugh at my sink if there's stuff in it. I don't know. Um, Karen, you have the cleanest kitchen. Like my in my fantasy world, I have a kitchen as clean as yours, Karen. So it's funny you're like, don't laugh at my mess. I'm like, uh, you have. This is why I'm the stage manager and you're the host for the cooking. <laughs> um. Yeah, so the dirt gets in your like celery, so make sure you kind of rinse it out. And then um, as soon as I get this other one, I'm going to bring my puppy over because they love the bottoms of like romaine lettuce and bok choy. That seems to be like their absolute favorite. And I think someone was asking, were we supposed to have baby bok choy or just bok plain bok choy? And I don't think it matters. Um, it doesn't specifically say baby bok choy, so my guess is it could be just the regular. I mean, they're again, they're pretty much the same. The baby is just a little more um, tender. And you're boiling it anyway, so it's going right. to soften it. Um, if I was braising this, maybe I would want the baby bok choy, um, but it doesn't make a difference to me one way or the other this, this way. Um, it's, this is just happened to be what was available at the grocery store near my work when I picked up stuff yesterday. So, you know. so somebody was asking about a replacement for bok choy um and someone was suggesting maybe the napa cabbage but i'm not sure i think that would work i, I, I think mean, that I, would be better than regular cabbage i think it's um yeah it kind of depends because it is a member it is a member of the cabbage family so probably any other sort of cabbage that you like would probably be good. I mean, even something like kale or spinach probably would be fine. The kale you'd need to cook longer. Snicky PD, do you want bok choy? Okay. I, say, yeah. I was gonna say yes, there was a request for a Snickers appearance. Oh, there, oh hi, hi, hi. Oh, bok choy, bye. But then I have to take this piece over to my blind dog because he can't he can't find me. <laughs> don't make the poor little guy he's gonna be just sitting there where's my bok choy Petey. let's see let's see if i can get you on camera there Petey. he is Petey, you want some you want some he's a little old man he's tired from his walk today do you want it oh he's like i don't even know what this is mommy because <laughs> i usually i usually because it's just me and if i have a little dirt in mine i'm not that sussed about it um i usually just give them like I chop the bottom off and then chop it in pieces. So this is a little different style for them. Yeah, I love my rescue puppies. I don't have my own kids, so they are my babies. They're my my little loves. Though the blind one is driving me crazy right now. I was telling Maya in our dress rehearsal. Um, I love a bed heater. And if you have chihuahuas um, or experience with chihuahuas, in general, you know that they very much like to burrow under the covers. And so Petey gets overheated in the night. And then I have to pick him up and take him to his water bowl multiple times. So recently I have been letting him drink out of my water glass, which I know it's gross, um, but I wanted to see if it would work before I like started putting two beside the side table. And it helps, but he's just old, poor guy but it's driving me crazy because I'm not getting good night's sleep. Yep. Gotta love those little rescue animals. Man, I'm getting water on myself in Saunders Journal. This is bad. This is very bad. Okay. I think everything's chopped up besides my tofu. And you know what? I decided I'm not going to do the shiitake after all. I just, I'm a little, I'm a little hesitant about my timing on that. So you can see that this has become, um, like when I squeeze it, it's just a little drier, no water's coming out. Uh, and that's what you want when you're going to actually get it crispy. I was not always a fan of tofu. The only tofu I had until a couple of years ago was what was in miso soup. And that's the silk, and so it's a totally different texture. And um, I've experimented with it, with it, and I really do enjoy when it is nice and crispy. I do like it then. So I'm just gonna chop it up into little chunks. This is my arch nemesis because I never get them quite even. And then I'm gonna throw them into a bowl, coat them with a little olive oil. 
um, and some cornstarch. Cornstarch, just like you would use for breading for a fried chicken, it helps crisp up tofu too. So Jess is asking, what does tofu taste like? And honestly, I kind of feel like Not it takes much. on the flavor of whatever it's being cooked in. And especially like when you, when, like when you're going to cook it, like Karen is going to cook it, it's just kind of a, yeah, Lee says air. Um, I think it tastes good when it's like fried up like that, like what Karen's going to do. I think it's really tasty, but there's not, um, there's, there's just not a, not necessarily a flavor to it. I don't know. It, it soaks up what it is that you uh, put it in for sure. And some of these chunks are too big. Um, you can flavor this in many different ways. Since I'm throwing this in a flavorful broth, I'm just going to um, put salt and pepper on it. But I've used like putting it in a sauce. You can also saute it. People love it in an air fryer. I don't have a traditional air fryer, but my oven does have a setting. I just got it all over the floor. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to use the air fry setting and I'll show you my setup for that. And I think you could do this on convection or anything like that. I'm going to put a lot of black pepper in this. A little salt on my salt cellar. Love this guy. Came from one of my wine clubs um, in the Napa Valley, Robert Sinsky. If you ever have an opportunity when you're in Napa, they make beautiful wines and they have a beautiful place to go along with their tasting and the properties just to die for. So I'm just coating this, trying to get it coated on all edges. Um, the nice thing about this with tofu is um, you don't have to do an egg wash so you don't end up with like gross, gross hands. I only have cornstarch on this hand. And then I'm taking a baker's rack and I'm putting it on, on top of a baking pan, just like a cookie sheet. And so I'm gonna put this at 400 into my oven on air fry. And then I'm gonna toss it at some point. And then as soon as I get this going, I'm gonna throw those eggs in the Instapot. And I'll show you how I do that if you're not familiar with it, but it sounds like most of you guys are but it's way easier than boiling the eggs. When you are roasting anything in the oven or air frying or whatever, you want enough air to circulate around. So I'm trying to make sure they're not super close to each other, just like when you're roasting vegetables. Give my hand a rinse, turn my air fry setting on for 400 and then in these guys now. Air fry 400, start. <laughs> no, Lee says that you're gonna sell me an Instapot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I use mine all the time and I think it depends on your style of cooking. For me, I don't like cooking rice. So I'm cleaning up a little bit as we go. Um, I had a rice cooker. I was able to get rid of my rice cooker. I got rid of my crock pot. So it replaced a lot of my regular appliances, but I use it for making legumes, making um, like quinoa, rice, farro, any kind of grain like that. And most of the vegetarian meals have something like that in it. So I can just put it going, turn it on, forget about it and not have to watch it. And so that doesn't matter how long the rest of my time he works out for. I do like that idea. Cause I, I will say, if I, if I'm cooking something on the stove, I cannot walk away from it. Cause I will totally forget that something is on the stove. <laughs> now mine is the little Instapot because there's only two of us, but I do want to mention that I am using the little thing that came with it, but I will, Maya, you're going to love this. If you're <laughs> cooking rice, I have like a Teflon version. And then if you're uh -huh. cooking rice, when I cooked that roast, look, you can buy lids and then this goes in the fridge. So, nice. And then I have different, um, what do you call it, gaskets? So like this one is my curry gasket because it does pick up the flavors of what mm. you're cooking. And then like, um, this is my sweet one, though I've never made anything sweet in my Instapot, but I do have it. And because it, you know, you don't want your rice tasting like curry if you're not making curry. So in here, I'm just gonna put a cup of water and then I'm gonna use half a dozen eggs. 
I find half a dozen in my size is about as much as it can handle. If I put more in, when it pressure cooks, it starts to shake and then I end up with more cracking. And you can tell this is my real house because look, I have two eggs from one container and then a brand new thing that I have picked up at Safeway. Safeway is not my favorite store, but I can walk to it from where I live. And so sometimes I end up going there for the things I forget all square. Right, you know, you gotta, gotta go where, eat where it's easy sometimes. Totally. They don't have that kind of stuff. You know, they're not, they may not have, they actually did have the tofu. I was kind of surprised that they had the brand of tofu that I wanted. And so I just have my eggs in there and I have that little trivet. And then I am setting this in, I'm making sure it's sealed and I'm gonna put it on high pressure for five minutes. And if I'm lucky, that should be right about soft boiled mostly, mm. but mostly boiled, but I don't like it when there's any runny in my white. I think I did three minutes the other day at three batch away. If anybody knows for sure, five minutes is perfect, put it in the chat and know. Nope, Carolyn says that her soup is in the last simmer stage and it looks so good. Oh my gosh, you were so fast. Well, they're not, you know, insta-potting and cutting up tofu and chatting and... <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm still not very fast, except for I'm on camera, so apparently I can't... Yeah, right. And, and, and feeding the doggies, right? <laughs> you had to give the little gold puppers their treats. Gotta give my babies their, their love. Well, that's right. Plug them in. And then fresh <laughs> cook. Pressure cook five minutes. And the one thing you want to do when you're doing the eggs, if you haven't done them before, is when it goes off, quick release and throw them in water so that they don't continue to cook. Just like if you were blanching. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Maya's going to. Oh, oh, Kim sliced her thumb open, chopping the bok choy. Oh, no. Ouch. I hope you're okay, Kim. Oh, Kim, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say we I'm always worried that Karen's gonna do something to herself with the knives and the wouldn't that be horrible on camera? Know. That would be good. Okay, I'm taking you guys over to a different view and I'm gonna start got my little recipe with me, bringing my little containers. I keep seeing on my Instagram and Facebook feed, they have like chopping boards that have these installed in them. It's really expensive, but I'm very tempted. Very tempted. Okay, I'm gonna oh, grab so I say, I see Jess is asking, are the Sonder recipes always vegetarian? I would say, um, I feel like most of the time they are with an option to add different kinds of protein because I think it's easier to add um, protein in, but there, there frequently is eggs. So I would not say they're always vegan, but I would say that there they are. There's a few that they have had meat in meat. and sometimes they will give the, um, the protein change on that. Um, but recently they've like, I think since July or so that they all have been vegetarian. It's a good base, you know? Yeah. And I'm, I'm all about like, I love a good base and then I can be like, Ooh, what protein do, what do I have ready? Do I have some chicken? Do I have some shrimp? Is there, you know, some beef or something that I've got in there? Um, always a good, and the, the tofu thing is fun. I feel like I need to start doing some more tofu just for a fun something different it, it is it is just something different it's like i said by no means am i pushing vegetarianism or veganism on anybody um i like i said i just honestly it's because um my husband doesn't really like the way i cook meat so this is a way <laughs> to be able to do it um one time i cooked a big like chicken leg and I cut it open and you could see some of the blood and it really turns him off. Um, he'll eat like charcuterie or like cured or like round meat. Um, but this is just easier. And since I suffer from acid reflux, this is definitely, um, easier for my evening meal, especially, especially cause I don't get home from work till six 30 or seven. So, and then I go to bed cause I usually start teaching at seven 30 in the morning. So there's not a lot of time in between. Or Cam is having to apply pressure and hold her hand up above to keep it from to, to get it to stop bleeding i feel so bad kim oh that stinks oh, yeah definitely you know wrap it up in your paper towel hold it up 
Yep. <laughs> Cooking is dangerous, yo. <laughs> Be careful. I had um, that happen one time in my summer camp. I, I like research. I like, I really do try to incorporate in my programming um, experimental things that kids may not necessarily want to eat, you know, not just chicken nuggets. So I decided that I would get a zoodle maker and I did, and this is looking a little dry. So I'm going to add a little more oil in it. I don't measure my oil. I just give it a little sweep around the pan, just like Rachel Ray. Yeah. Um, I say that's me. I'm all like, just, just lop in some olive oil. It's all good. Totally. So, um, I got the zoodle and I like did a lot of research and basically it was just like a pencil sharpener. Right. So like nowhere near blades. And if kids make their food in general, they do do better with it. And then I only had the middle school CITs working with it and dang it. If someone didn't, one of the kids grabbed it and no one saw it and she ended up, um, it wasn't bad, but you know, when you cut your finger, it bleeds a lot. And I had a male counselor who had worked with me for years and I absolutely adore him. He's a high school teacher now. Um, but he totally freaked out about it. And uh -huh. I was I had to deal with all of it. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm not good with blood. But you know, there's a kid there. So like, I can't deal with my own blood, but if there's a kid that needs help, I can deal with it with their blood. Yes, when I was substituting a few weeks ago, um, I had a little girl come up to me and she pulled her mask down and she's like, my nose is bleeding. And it was like, <laughs> the mask was full of blood. Her face was, I'm like, okie dokie then, let's let's clean you up a little bit yeah no and then of course you like you have gloves or the gloves accessible are you gonna wait this kid gonna have to wait till you get the gloves you know like there's like a whole thing with it yeah it's not easy so i'm just sauteing and i messed up so all of the onions and stuff are in here but it seems to be going okay nothing's browning yet or not oh good question um linda is asking how many servings is this recipe supposed to be and i'm it's looking not here but i would think four because that's just that, standard for most recipes uh, so yeah most of the recipes they do is four yeah i would say four um so i'm just getting this nice and sauteed i'm not trying to put color on them. i'm just sweating them out um, and then the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to add the stock when it's nice and ready. And I don't know about you guys, but I love the America's Cut the Chin podcast from back in the day. And I learned that ultimately when you're buying it in a box, it's just this with water added. So you're paying for the shipping of that water. So since that point, I started buying the can. And one reason I do like it is that I can change the amount of sodium in mine too. And they have this in chicken broth, they have it in beef broth, they have a vegetarian, they have a roasted chicken one. I think they even have a lobster one. Um, I'm using a seasoned vegetable base, just since I'm not using chicken, I decided I just use the vegetable base, but I got chicken in my fridge too. All right, so what's in the pan right now? What do you, what are you stirring up there? So I got the shallots, which were supposed to go in first, but the ginger and garlic and onions are in here too, because I threw them all in the same container. So that's, that's what I got going so far. There we go. You can tell this is a very well used duck oven. This has traveled the world with me. Um, it came with me when we moved to New Zealand. I didn't bring anything but kitchen stuff and a few clothing items when we moved there. I'm getting close to the point that I'm going to want to add that water to it. I'm going to give this maybe about 30 seconds. And I'm literally, since I'm not using a broth, I'm going to take my pot over and I'm going to add water to it. And then I'm going to spoon in my base. I'm going to give it a taste. And if I think it needs more, I add more. And, you know, I can add more too, but I can't take away. So I'm going to be cognizant of that. And so when would you put the egg when would you put in the egg? The same time as the noodles? I uh, know the egg is just a topping. Egg is just a topping for when you're done. Everything's all served up and you just put the egg. Yeah, just like you were doing, the way they used it is kind of like ramen. So it. it's just, it's just a topping like the sesame seeds or the green onion. Um, you know, a little extra protein, 
Um, maybe it makes it a little more husband and kid friendly that way if you're not using chicken or shrimp. Is anybody using chicken? Anybody using shrimp? So I fill my pan up. Well, I don't know. You know, it, I have a couple of inches, so I have room to add all the mushrooms and such to it. Um, but I have enough in there that I can definitely throw the bok choy and everything are going to be submerged in it. So on, I like the better than bouillon, better than the cubes, and it's just a paste. And so they said one teaspoon is one cube or one eight ounce can of broth. And I would say this is probably about four. So I'm going to use about a tablespoon ish. That sounds good. Oh, and Kathy says the lobster, um, better than bouillon, makes a great pasta cream sauce. Ooh, that's a really good tip. That does sound good. I'm going to have to go find that now. That I had not really seen good. it um, until I went to the grocery store looking for stuff um, this week. That was my first time I ever saw it. But uh, I bet that would be absolutely delicious. Oh, yeah, and, and Tanya was saying she didn't see anything about the egg in the recipe. No, the egg is an extra... Karen was just saying it, it looked like she, she wanted to add in an egg there at the end, but that's not actually in the recipe. It's not in the recipe. It is in the photo. So I just was like, Meh, maybe I might sell someone on how amazing doing them in the Instapot is. Exactly. And then Jess is asking, are we finding this recipe easy to make? Well, Kim would oh, probably yeah. tell you no, because she <laughs> she's chopping her fingers off. <laughs> but... <laughs> Would you say it's right. easy, Karen? Sorry, Snickers. Oh, Snickers. Snickers. Wants more bok choy. He, um, he, I, when, when the door opens, he freaks out. And I think when I opened the oven door, he thought it was the front door. It's really fun when pizza's delivered. They like leave it on the step because they want to deal with them. Do you know what's um, that bouillon base, that better than bouillon? Like what are the ingredients in it? Like are there? Um, it's veggies. Let me see. Um, carrots, celery, onions, tomatoes. Oh. And they, like I said, this is the organic version, um, but they also have a roasted vegetable version, which would probably add a little smokier flavor to it. Maybe a little richer. Nice. So I'm turning up my heat a little bit on my pot so I can get this kind of going. Um, and then I'm going to be adding the star anise and soy sauce. And I may, I do have some sesame oil. So I may throw a little of that in too, based on your suggestions. And the star anise calls for two. I'm not a huge fan of it. So I think I'm going to use one. Licorice isn't my favorite. But they are very pretty. Did we lose Maya? No, nope, I'm still here. Nope, I'm okay. here. Yep. Okay. I'm all like, all of a sudden your photo went away and I'm all oh, like. Oh, no. Maybe I because I stopped talking or something, but. <laughs> okay. I'm like, uh oh, did we lose her? And then it is about two tablespoons. Make sure tables, not teaspoons. And um, I'm going to eyeball it because, you know, I learned from Rachel. Yeah, and you know, it's, and it's soy sauce, right? So, you know. So, yeah, I'm going to add this in. I'm gonna use the rest of the bottle and then I'm gonna taste it. And if I need more, I'll open the other bottle. If I don't, then I won't. Um, and you know, if you make something over salty and you have a potato, throw it in and it'll absorb a lot of that salt. So oh, that's, that's a good, good tip. Yeah, uh, it's one I've had to use before. I'm pretty good about not salting. And then I'm like, this really should use, <laughs> this really needs more salt. <laughs> Oh yeah, I think that's enough of everything. And it, it's salty enough that it will give flavor to the vegetables, but not so salty that I think that it will um, take away from anything. That's kind of what I'm. That's kind of what I'm looking for. You want to season as you go because you can always build that flavor. So you saw me add it to the sautéing vegetables. You season then. We use a little more stuff in. You season. So that's just kind of how I work it. Yep. And so Terry was asking about the eggs again. So Terry, she. Um... She you cooked her eggs in the Instapot mm -hmm. and was only for like five minutes. Yep. So, so with the Instapot, if you've not used one before, the way it works is even though it's five minutes, it has to come up to pressure. And so it takes a few minutes for it to go up to five minutes. 
So it's up to pressure and it has two minutes left. I really love using the Instapot to make quinoa because as soon as it comes up to pressure, it only is one minute. Oh, wow. So love that. Like that's one you can tell I do pretty often if I remember the time on it and don't have to look it up. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for this to come up to a simmer. And then I'm going to start adding the mushrooms, the noodles, and bok choy. Remember, I'm going to add the whites of my bok choy first since they're going to take a little longer to cook. Yep. Um, and that because I do not like the flavor of raw onions. When I put those greens in of the bok choy, I'm going to actually add my green onions in there. It is a beautiful plating to have that nice fresh green on top but I don't really care for the flavor. So I'm gonna just throw it in when it's time. Yeah. My tofu is still going. It takes a bit for it to come up to um, oven temperatures to the 400. So it's kind of, you know, not there yet. How long have we been doing this? Oh, a little over an hour. Yeah, a little, yeah, been a little over an hour. All right, which is, so which is pretty I'm good pretty considering like you've added the eggs are extra um, and the tofu, the tofu part was extra, not necessarily in the recipe, but like we were talking at the beginning, because I know some folks have kind of joined. I've been letting folks in as they as they pop in, but um, this is a really good recipe for kind of the what's what's in my refrigerator, right? Like, oh, I've got some carrots. Oh, I've got some peas oh i have some metamame oh i have you know whatever and kind of put anything in because you know it's it's a soup so those are always handy that looks dangerous karen i'm worried so about the steam the steam all because of my instapot <laughs> um i put this over because i don't want it damaging my new cabinets because we moved into this house not too long ago um and if you were with me on sunday you'll know that we drilled into our sprinkler line and we had a huge wall like open with insulation and pipe and over a thousand dollars to have someone come in and, uh, and fix it. That doesn't include them fixing the drywall. That's just to install the pipe because if someone drills into your actual um, wire, like not wiring your plumbing for fire, it can't be a plumber. It has to be someone specific to does that for a living. So sometimes. That so does I'm not sound fun. Back my colander and then I'm going to run rinse them under water and I do have an egg casualty um but it's kind of interesting I'll see if I can get it where you can see it look the instapot makes it so easy that the shell literally just peeled off so here's the egg <laughs> and here's the shell yeah, it looks so, like an alien <laughs> it does look like an, but look that's how easy it is to peel the instapot eggs now, nice I've already over I'm gonna open it up and see how done he was. Get some water on this. If I was doing this without you guys here, I'd get some eyes to do it that way, but I don't want y'all to have to listen to it. Oh yeah, this is perfect. It's a perfect soft oil in my opinion. Oh, it's hot. So it just has that little bit of creaminess left in the middle. Oh, so that yep. was five minutes. Yeah, so I mean, you know, cook it. To, to the degree you like it, if you like it more hard boiled, then you can absolutely yeah, do that. Six minutes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw my mushrooms in and I'm gonna, while these cook a little bit longer, I want them cooked a little longer. The recipe doesn't say that, but that's what I wanna do because I prefer the mushrooms giving their, their juices into the broth, but I'm gonna pull out my tofu and give it a turn. And like I said, remember, I just thought it'd be fun since we have a lot of time together um, to share how I use tofu um, in my cooking. But like I said, I'm not vegan. I'm not even 100% vegetarian. Gonna give my tongs a wash since they touch the eggs. Pull these guys out. I'm starting to get a little disaster zone going in here. <laughs> you're, you're getting a lot of stuff there on the countertops. I am going to turn my flame down a little bit until I get these. So you can see my tofu is starting to get a little brown and you can see the texture is changing. So I'm just giving them a flip like if you were doing chicken. And then this is going to be a garnish in it as well, in the soup as well, because um, 
I don't want my crispiness to go away. I want to put it in like right when I'm adding my sesame seeds. Oh, it's getting stuck to my little air fryer thing. Like I said, I don't have an air fryer. My husband won't let me buy one since I have an air fryer on it. But this guy right here, you can see it's crispy on the outside and soft in the middle. I love that. I would say a lot of times like people use halloumi or something and the tofu is a substitute for that. It's kind of a texture of like a, a hard cheese you might fry. Well, you know, Lee, Lee said since your husband drilled into the wall, um, you should get to get the air fryer. Oh, yeah. I like that. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's a fair trade-off. I think so, too. Um, and Carolyn says that the soup, it's super delicious, just posted in Sonder Club. Her husband's going to try it, which is a rarity because he doesn't like vegetables. And she's sending some over to her mom, too. Oh, that's awesome. I'm throwing in the white part, parts of the bok choy. Yep, I white parts first. For a or so, And then I'm going to add the noodles and then I'm going to throw in the green parts of the bok choy and the green onions. Love it. And I mean, also just be aware that if you're doing like thin noodles, it's obviously going to take less time to cook than like the big thick rice noodles. It's just, this is what they had at the store that was near my roof, so. And that's the other thing, like use the noodles that you like. I mean, I know it, it calls for um, rice noodles, but if you want like some soba noodles, I like soba noodles. Um, I you know, love soba noodles. And if I wasn't doing this with you guys, if I was making this on my own, I would have used ramen noodles. Yep. Or the ramen, like pick a noodle you like. There's so many different noodles. So yeah, like we said um, earlier that there are some, you know, if you are keto, there are some you know, hearts of palm, kelp, and apparently miracle noodles that you're able to use too. There are two bunches in here. There's only two of us. I'm only going to use one bunch. And this is always the messier part. So I'm going to do it over the sink. So I'm going to go ahead, throw these in, give them a little stir as they soften. And then I am gonna throw the green part of my bok choy in, as well as those green onions. God, that boiled egg looks so good. I cannot wait to eat it on top of my ramen. Remember the green onions in the pitcher are garnish. I just don't like the flavor. So I'm cooking mine towards the end so that we get a little bit. This is looking really pretty. Look at that. Yeah, it's looking good. See, that's why I'm all like, it needs carrots. It needs some orange. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the visual eye, I definitely think, I think that's probably why they chose to do red pepper flakes on top. Oh, uh, yeah. Not just the flavor wise, but um, for the color contrast as well. Um, the green onions will look pretty on top though. Oh, this is looking really pretty. I am going to grab some sesame oil and drizzle some in. There you go. Yep. So a lot of folks were saying to put a little bit of sesame oil in there to uh, kind of add a little extra flavor, which I think would be very, very tasty. Oh. And if you're unfamiliar, there is toasted and untoasted versions. I have the toasted version. I think you cook with the untoasted, you flavor with the toasted. If I am, I, I don't quote me, but I think that's what. That sounds and right. And now has decided that he wants to grab his um squeak toy oh, i wondered what that was yeah, yeah. <laughs> snickers has a squeaky toy oh whitney says she used faux noodles and she's faux done noodles? yep <laughs> and again it's like any kind of noodle that you want is just make sure your noodles are cooked through yeah exactly i'm almost there i'm gonna turn this guy off because it's gonna simmer I'm gonna do a quick check on that tofu. It's about ready to. I'm just gonna clean up my surface area so I can plate. And Kathy thinks she might add a little fish sauce to it, which would also be good, I think, as well. Oh yeah, for sure. Not vegan, but like I said, I'm not vegan in your eggs, but um, I think most people know that that's not vegan. Did you know Worcestershire sauce is not vegan? 
Because it does use fish sauce in it. What does it have in it? I think it's fish sauce. In the Worcestershire sauce? Yeah. I know, the words you can you never say. <laughs> you learn weird things, you know? I'm definitely, I'm never going to be vegan, so. <laughs> I think it's funny, though. Um, when I was running, I lost a tofu in the oven. I'll get it later when it's cooled down. Um, I had some vegans in my camp, and it was very funny to me that the dad didn't know gummy bears are not vegan. Uh. But I always make sure to have like vegan marshmallows and then um gummies I always get the little Swedish fish for gummies because like those Swedish fish however don't have um the gelatin the gelatin yeah, yeah. um oh because a lot of folks are saying they think it has sardines or anchovy paste in the Worcestershire sauce <laughs> and then I did I forgot to add this I'm just going to throw it in right now it's just edinomy like I said it's just adding a little extra protein in it. I had it in the freezer, might as well. Let that warm through for a second. And I got my bowl out for plating. If you were of my um, generation, these bowls may look familiar to you from Pottery Barn. I know multiple people who have this in different colors, blue and such. Yep, I've got the blue, I've got the blue set. <laughs> so there, there you go. Now you know. Now you know. Okay, so let me get my sesame seeds, my red pepper flakes, and I guess it's time to like ladle everything in. Oh, good. And, and Kim that said she up. Kim said she did get the bleeding stopped on her finger, but she didn't have a band aid. So packing tape and a paper towel. Way to way to go, and Kim. Beauty, I love it. <laughs> That's like um, when New Zealanders pride themselves on kiwi ingenuity like that's what they say about everything yeah so I use it takes. To serve, and then i'm gonna use the ladle for like the veggies and broth snickers thinks it smells good i was gonna say is snickers ready for a taste yeah but it has mushrooms so this is and onions and garlic so it is not um dog friendly no not doggy friendly sorry so i'm gonna throw some tofu on top and then that egg already came open, so waste not, want not. Make sure the shell's off of it, even if it looks like an alien. Look at that view. Oh, you can't see. I'll get it for you. <laughs> My look queen, at can't that. See. Look at that. Look Ooh, at that. Look at that. It's so pretty. And then I'm going to top with the sesame seeds and the um, red pepper flakes. And then we are. Nice. Yum. How's it smell? It smell smells good? great. It smells great. And I got toasted. If you don't have toasted, um, I just saved myself a step. You can toast them in a dry pan and that will um, get them all nice and the kitchen will smell good with the sesame. Some red pepper flakes. And then if you were doing the green onions, then you're going to do I that. Top. I was thinking if you like to add um, like the crispy onions, sometimes those would be good. Ooh, Look like, at that. like green bean casserole. Yep, yep. All right, here we go. Grab my spoon, give it a taste. All right, Lee, Lee says that you're her Rachel Ray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lee, we are kindred spirits. The edinami is is good. Yeah, I mean, really, that's what I like about it is the fact that you can just really kind of throw in just about anything. I mean, if you don't have bok choy, like I said, we were talking about, you know, using some, if you had some cabbage or something to pop in there. Yeah. I carrots. Mean, carrots. I mean, it could definitely be a meal that you just um, throw what's in your um, vegetable drawer that's about to go bad. Yep. You could probably do um, like, good. like the red, yellow, green peppers if you wanted to throw a little, again, a little more color or something in there. As long as you like the taste of those. <laughs> give, try to give the mushrooms a taste. This is good. I will say that I wouldn't mind an extra drizzle of sesame oil on top, mm. but I really enjoy like drizzling olive oil over the top of my meals as well. So, you know, fat is delicious. Well, I guess that leaves us with, it. give it a couple of minutes if anybody has any questions and then we'll wrap it up. Yep. So how's everybody? 
How's everybody doing? Oh, she's someone's adding carrots. <laughs> carrots and the sesame oil. Yep. And the shrimp. Mm, very good. Snickers. Quiet. <laughs> he wants to be part. <laughs> he does. He does. Yep. So some folks are simmering. Oh, the tofu and egg dip. I can go over that real quick again. Literally yeah, Google eggs and in Instapot, but it is one cup of water. <laughs> Snickers. Dog. Dog. Um, one cup of water. I put six eggs in the bottom because that's how many will fit in my small Instapot. Five minutes high pressure release and then um, put it in cold water or ice water. Why? Why do my chihuahuas want to run around right now? And then for the actual tofu, a little olive oil, a little cornstarch, I air fried on 400 until they got crispy. So that's it. Yep. And you know, because um, Jess is saying, thanks for letting me participate, even though I couldn't cook at the moment. You can always join these socials. You do not have to cook at the same time. Um, absolutely not. And for some folks, Sometimes those recipes are a little intimidating in the books, right? Especially like you're like, I don't even know what bok choy is, or I don't even know what this stuff is. So it's like always come, 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 come to the social. Our next cooking one for March is on March 12th, when we will be making an arugula salad with lemon zest, Parmesan, and balsamic dressing. Mm. So, and again, that'll be one we can potentially think about different kinds of protein that we might want to add. Oh, shrimp would be really good. Yep. Yep. Nice grilled on top. I think anything would be good with that. Um, even steak, like some thinly sliced. Yep, thinly steak. sliced. Maybe for that one, um, if you have not experimented at all with seitan, maybe I'll mm. marinate seitan and cook that up for you guys because it really can mimic the flavor of like Euro meat or something like that, which would be good on top. And it does take up take the flavors of it. You know, just as Maybe you haven't experienced it before. So someone was asking what March's theme is. I'm not going to say it out loud because I don't like to spoil because some people don't like spoilers, but I'll, um, I'll send you a, a um, private message. So just don't spoil it um, for anybody. <laughs> but I figure it's telling you the recipe isn't necessarily spoiling. So mm -mm, no, and that's given something to look forward to for sure. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Well, I hope everybody really enjoyed this. Um, it is, you know, it is, it's just like us hanging out. It's a cook along. It's kind of like brunch. You know, if you're cooking or not, you can open a bottle of wine. I didn't because I don't want to slice my finger in front of you guys, but um, it's very casual. It's probably the most casual of all of our socials. Um, and as a little plug, if you are attending tomorrow's weekly setup, Maya is going to be the one on camera and I'm going to be the one who's behind the scenes. Yep, because it won't have to be in my kitchen. No, no. <laughs> um, and I saw so it's Kim, gonna be good. I saw Kim asking if this is going to be a monthly class. And yes, I believe um, that is the plan to always do um, one here. social for the cooking for whatever the recipe is that's in the, the um, journal for that month. So always keep an eye out for that. But I don't know if anyone else is willing to show their kitchen. So you're stuck with me probably. <laughs> but I think Karen's pretty good. Don't you? Everybody love, I love Karen and her cooking. Yay. Oh, I love Karen that. is awesome cooker. I love having you guys at the social. I love spending my weekends with you guys. It is, um, it's beneficial to me as it is to you, getting in the community, seeing all of the things. And I will say right up front that the more socials I hold in that month, the better my month ends up being. It's because it holds me, like it holds me accountable to make sure I'm using every aspect of that journal, so. And I do wanna say, um, cause I don't have the slides up, but I can put it up, but I am going to put in the chat, um, the, survey link. So please, 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 please um, take a moment, fill out the survey. You should also get um, an email that will have it in there as well, but really give us ideas of what you would like to see. Definitely say we love the cooking social we want. Please don't ever stop, right? Please keep doing the cooking. 
Um, if you have other ideas, if you noticed in Sonder Club today, the question was, what do you want to see more of in socials? So if you haven't been on to Sonder Club, um, you so nice. make sure you hop in there today and tell them cooking socials. We love the cooking socials. Don't ever take those away. And if you want to see more, I mean, it's very possible, um, you know, if there's some other recipe Snickers. <laughs> uh oh, Karen's got to go check out the poor little pupper. Um, but if you want to see, <laughs> if you want to see other things, um, oh, there we go. See, everybody say hi to Snickers. Isn't he the funniest looking thing ever? Look at his, his Look ears at his are ears. bigger than his head. <laughs> and his legs. And he has no, like no fur on his belly. He's a little naked belly. He's got mm -hmm. a little naked belly. He's a good boy, except for he's noisy. Well, but yeah, you know, let us know what it is that you think. I know Lee's going to put in there that she wants a Sonder Summit. Oh, let's one until we can kind of be see Laura. Laura so, has her little Laura, baby. Yeah. Laura, what little baby is this? Oh yeah, let's see all the babies. All the babies. He's a, uh, his name's Nitro. He's a dog or dog. <laughs> he's a chihuahua <laughs> as well, but he's actually terrified anytime something's going on in the kitchen. So he won't turn. There he is. Oh, he's a little chihuahua go. too. There's his little face. Oh, I see another chihuahua. Angela, is that, is yours a chihuahua too, Angela? Or is that? Yes. A... This is my chihuahua creature. <laughs> look at our little creatures i love it i love it i can't believe we have so many chihuahuas on the call that's hilarious <laughs> awesome well, I guess without further ado we'll um say awesome. goodbye and i'm yes. so looking forward to digging into the rest of this soup because it's really good so i'll pop that up. i'll pop up and then I'll play us a song and we will hopefully see everybody well maybe not everybody but whoever we can we'll see you tomorrow for our weekly setup have a fabulous fabulous rest of your Saturday my friends oh, where do we go babe where is my home oh i'm just a lost toy and i lost my soul i said i lost my soul does someone know where i go oh, i can feel that i'm close